The monumental battle underway in Washington between factions of the Democratic Party over a trillion dollar infrastructure bill held up and used as leverage for an even bigger bill to address so-called human infrastructure, expanded Medicare, help for struggling families, and climate protection initiatives. Republicans are watching the disarray among Democrats with pleasure, but they are also not in the clear. They are, in fact, in the hot seat because those big bills will be coming up soon for a vote. The infrastructure bill passed the Senate with strong bipartisan support. The House deadline to vote on it is the end of the month. So what should we expect when of South Florida's veteran members of Congress, Mario Diaz-Balart, a Republican from Miami-Dade, is joining us now to weigh in. Congressman, good morning. Great to see you. Good morning, Congressman. Well, I cannot, I cannot hear the Congressman. I hope that he hears us. Congressman, are we good? Yes. We, we are. Great. You know, first of all, I should say that uh, the infrastructure package is really in your wheelhouse since you are the ranking Republican on the House subcommittee on transportation, roads, highways, and you've brought millions of dollars to South Florida uh, for those kinds of projects. So that bill did pass the Senate in August with strong bipartisan support. When it comes to the House vote, will you vote for it? Michael, you, what you said is accurate. Uh, it passed uh, the Senate in August. It's been sitting in the House. The only reason that the Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, has not brought it forward, it's because it's linked to the much bigger bill, uh, which would entirely change the economy of the United States from a free market economy to a government controlled, more socialist economy. And they are linked. Wait, wait, so excuse me, how, how, how in the world can one bill, even one as big as $1.2 trillion, how can that change the entire economy? Again, it's linked to the bigger one. Uh, and and when, I, when I say it's linked, I say it, but more importantly, Speaker Pelosi says it's linked. The president of the United States says it's linked. Senator Bernie Sanders, whose bill it is, says it's linked. And it's been part of it has been sitting in August uh, since August in the House. The reason they haven't brought it forward is because it's linked to the bigger one and the bigger one, which entails, by the way, don't take my word for it. It has most of the Green New Deal, uh, which the, the, the one who created that AO chief asset not uh, 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 an environmental bill. It's to change the economy. It's put together by the self-described uh, socialist in the Senate, Senate uh, Senator Bernie Sanders, who has said that he wants to change from a market-driven economy to a socialist economy. So again, there's no secret here. Nobody's hiding it. Uh, it may not be getting all the coverage, but it is absolutely linked, and it would it would have the effect of changing the economy. As those members who are part of it have said themselves from a free market system to a socialist market, uh, a socialist control system, that's why, by the way, the Democrats, even among themselves, are having such a difficult time, you know, getting this done. Because I think a lot of them understand that this is more than just a bill. This is transforming the country in a way that, frankly, I don't think the American people want. All right. So, wow, let's unpack that a little bit. And I think you and I are both having a couple of mic problems today. So I think we've got that all ironed out. So, <laughs> hi, Congressman. Um, let's un undo a little of that. So the, the two bills absolutely are trying to be linked by some in the Democratic Party. That's why there hasn't been a vote yet, to your point. So this... You know, this bill, the human infrastructure bill that is so controversial at the moment is what they call it because it's, you know, you could look at it as a big spending for a lot of things that's not hard infrastructure. The people who are, are such proponents of it are looking at as an investment in people, which is a human infrastructure as well. So my question to you is the number's really big. And, you know, the, we've been hearing once you get past like a trillion, I think people just their minds don't wrap around that. But what minds do wrap around is programs and, and all of those things I'm sure everyone is for, but for what they cost. So give us a sense of what it takes. Well, what would you take out and what would you keep in to get to a number that you might consider? Yeah, Glenn, and it's more than just a number. It's the policies behind that. Because let's be very clear, you can tweak it to score, what we call score, whatever number you want, by postponing the, 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 the implementation of certain parts, delaying them, uh, sunsetting them, even though you know that, frankly, it's going to be impossible to not continue them. So you can tweak the number. 
from you know multi-trillion to a trillion or less. It's the policy. So when you have policies, for example, for for uh, disincentivizing work, when you have policy to uh, uh, you know pay people to stay at home, when you have again gr- uh, big parts of the Green New Deal, and and, and I know that it may sound uh, a little bit uh, you know overstated, but let's be clear: the Green New Deal, the person who drafted it, uh, the chief of staff of, of, of Congresswoman uh, uh, Cortez, stated in plain English. That this was not an, a this was an economic changing yeah. model. That's what Con- Congressman. I'm sorry. You know these bills have lots of fingerprints on them. I'm sure AOC staff does. But 435 members of the House, where you sit, a uh, hundred senators, everybody is weighing in. Let me just point out that the the bill you're talking about, the so-called soft instru- infrastructure bill, is not for just needless thing. It's universal pre-K, free community college for two years paid family leave, expanding Medicare, elder care, and then climate change. Now, whether you think it's the Green New Deal or not, there's a lot of money in there that is needed for resilience for climate change. Would you disagree with that? Michael, you know that I uh, put $12 billion uh, in the bill the last, uh, after the, some of the larger storms for resiliency. Um, you can do that as I did without destroying the free market system. And so, you know, you mentioned some of the things that are in there. Everything is in that bill, but here's the bottom line. It will not only, again, in that this country to a point of tying our hands in the future, by the way, but it will also, again, disincentivize work. And it is the beginning of the, Venezuela, the Venezuelization of our economy. But again, it's can not- you, Can you just it, explain, what, explain what you mean by that? Because, I mean, things like, uh, money for child care actually in- incentivizes work for women. Now, that just is an example. But what, what do you mean, Congressman, when you say the, the socialization or the Venezuelization or whatever word you just used? What, what does that mean, practically speaking? Not, not an easy word to say, by the way, I admit. Uh, uh, look, what it is, again, is changing the free market system to something that we would not recognize. And like so, what, what, how does it change? Uh, honestly, this is a sincere question. How does sure, that change sure, sure. the free market system? How does that change it? The Green New Deal, the Green New Deal, which a big part of it is incorporated in this legislation. You know, you mentioned some parts. Uh, and by the way, it's really funny. You're accurate when you say free college for two years. So after that, what happens? Well, what they're counting on is that these programs will stay there forever, but then the price tag goes from three and a half trillion to what? 10 trillion, 12 trillion, 50 trillion? It's unlimited. They have everything that you can think of, that the more radical elements, this is not an issue of Republicans or Democrats, all right? This is the more radical left-wing elements. The things that they have never been able to do pass on their own, they have put in this bill, including most, uh, you know, uh, most of the most damaging elements of the Green New Deal. By the way, one of the reasons that Senator Manchin, who uh, represents West Virginia, is having such difficulty supporting this is precisely because he understands that it destroys the uh, the production of domestic energy. It incentivizes people to stay home, well, pays said, them yes, to if, stay home, yeah, continues yeah, to pay them yeah, to stay home. Yeah, let, let me, I'm sorry, jump in here. He did say the other day that he didn't want to create a entitlement society. That seems to be his main objection to this uh, American jobs bill, I think as it's called. Correct. And I think that's exactly right. In other words, it is the largest expansion of entitlements, uh, you know, since since the New Deal, potentially even larger than the New Deal at a time when we are seeing that um, when you pay people to not work, it's not that they're evil. They won't work. Um, And so it is, again, the largest expansion of entitlements. By the way, also the largest tax increase in the history of the United States the biggest increase of spending in the history of the United States. It will force massive tax increases on everybody. The president said during the campaign that it would, he would not uh, agree to anything that would raise taxes on people making uh, less than 400000 All sorts of independent groups have stated that this is a huge tax increase on the middle class, on everyone. It's a job uh, killer. Who would benefit, by the way, is China. Uh, ironically, the biggest beneficiary, if this bill were to become law, would be Communist Chinese uh, Party, because it would 
it would it would open the door for massive exportation of American jobs, mostly to China. Again, it's not that only the Republicans don't like it. That's why the Democrats are having a hard time uh, supporting this this legislation. Congressman, real quick, and uh, before we hit break, and, and we'll come back afterwards because we have a lot to talk about. But, but can you just explain that? What do you mean exporting jobs to China? That that is a difficult thing to wrap our head around in this bill. Yeah, but I'll I'll, I'll put it in the most simple way. Uh, there, the taxes for American businesses would be higher here than they would be in China. And so here's the question: Remember, jobs had left to China, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing jobs. They started coming back in droves. If you have reported in the past. Uh, when the tax were, taxes were reduced to the American people and to the job creators. And again, this would mean that they're going to pay a lot more to do business here than in China. It's not rocket science. I mean, you know, we've seen this movie before. And so it's hard to believe that despite the facts, they would move forward on something so dramatic. But again, as you all mentioned at the beginning of the show, the debate uh, is between Democrats. Uh, and Michael, when you talked about, you know, I've been Mr. Infrastructure for a long, long time, and yeah. my record speaks for itself. They're not talking to any of the Republicans. They're not asking for. Well, they'll uh, at some um, point they, you know, they will changes, ask changes, improvements. They will They're not ask from anybody. Vote. They're trying to stuff it through I mean, as is. They're yeah. trying to stuff it through as is. Yeah. Um, Congressman Mario Dispolart, hold tight. We have more questions for you. We'll be back more with more questions uh, for him in just a minute. On this Sunday, we are having a lively discussion with Congressman Mario Diaz-Balart of Miami. Congressman, let me ask you a little bit more about money. During the Trump years, the national deficit increased by $8 trillion. And frankly, there was nary a peep from Republicans in Congress. Now, the Democrats are going to raise it even more, and Republicans like you are just, you know, going crazy. So was it okay not to uh, object during the Trump era, but it's fine now? No, I would argue that I think that uh, we've been spending too much money for quite a long time now. Um, but let's just put it in perspective. What we're dealing with now, if they succeed, it would be more spending than all of the years where the, uh, the Republicans control the House combined, Michael. So if, and I would argue that we did, we spent too much money in the past, this is by far the largest tax increase, spending increase. And there's a reason, by the way, why there's a new word in our vocabulary that the three of us have not used in decades, and that's inflation. People right. are getting hit really hard with inflation precisely because of the government policies of just excessive spending to at a rate, which, by the way, we have never, ever seen in the history of our country. So you and um, you voted yes for this temporary raise in the limit. And so did the my other Miami-Dade GOP Congress men and women, man and woman. Um, so that has a shelf life. What happens? Is this kicking the can down the road? What happens next? Well, On December, December 3rd. Correct. Uh, Glenda, the appropriation bills are some of the things that have to get done. Um, there was an extension of the current law, in essence, uh, just for a little while to allow us to get that done. But right now, uh, the majority, House, Senate, and the White House, is not focused on the things that have to get done. They're focused on the things that they want to get done, including the Bernie Sanders proposed uh, budget. And so uh, I'm hoping that we will get the necessary things done and that we will stop trying to impose on the American people something that they don't want, that, that they ever asked for. Look, th this president, uh, you know, ran as a moderate. Um, and right now, by the way, these proposals have been put together by Senator, Senator Bernie Sanders. And so uh, it looks like Biden got elected, but Bernie Sanders' ideas and proposals are the ones that he's pushing. It's time to get back to the people's business, the things that have to get done. You mentioned one of those that really needs to get done. Yeah, Congressman, let me ask you to expand a little bit uh, on the subject of inflation, which means things cost more and our dollar doesn't go quite as far. Uh, in the last period, the something called the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index, which is used by the Fed, went up by 4.3 percent. Uh, I mean, that's just a huge amount. And uh, I think one way the Fed would say to bring it down is to raise interest rates. Do you think the Fed, in fact, should go ahead 
and raise interest rates, make money more expensive? No, frankly, what, we need, what I think we need to do, where, where I think the emphasis needs to be, is on not continuing to add fuel to the fire. And so among the biggest uh, increases, obviously, in prices and inflation is energy. One of the first things that this president did the first day was to basically declare war on all of domestic energy in the United States, while, by the way, uh, 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 getting rid of sanctions that sanctioned oil and coal in places like Russia and China. Hard to believe. So again, it's this po these policies that are creating the problem. Like it's these this president that created the crisis in the southern border. It's this president that created the catastrophe in Afghanistan. This is very simple. These are government created crises uh, that don't need to be there. So it's time for this administration to take a deep breath, slow down, start start working for the things that the American people need not to appease Bernie Sanders and AOC, the most radical folks in the country. So you saw the president on Capitol Hill. Um, your word is appease. I think other people on the other side would use negotiate. I mean, it, it's clear that the sausage is being made. That kind of makes people's eyes glaze over who maybe aren't watching this program <laughs> and aren't in the weeds with that. But, but isn't there a sense that you had that this president is negotiating with members of his own party mm -hmm. that did not get elected president in order to come to some sort of compromise, which you, yeah, which you are very involved in? Oh no! I, you know, I look. I'm, uh, you know, I'm as as you all know, I'm pretty good at negotiations, right? Of, of getting things done. Yeah, there's no doubt that they're trying to get the Democrats uh, to to do this. Now, here's the sad part: if they actually took a step back and started working in a bipartisan or nonpartisan basis, I think the country would be better off for it. But that's not what they're doing, despite the fact that the president ran saying that he would do that. So you're absolutely right that what they're trying to do is negotiate. You know. Uh, break arms, whatever they're trying to do to get the Democrats to vote for it. And the fact that the Democrats so far uh, are reluctant tells you just how extreme this legislation really is. Yeah. Congressman, before we run out of time, one Florida centric question I need to ask you. You are astute politically and, you know, you've been in the legislature. Now you're in Congress. Uh, the approval ratings for Governor Ron DeSantis took kind of a sharp dip here. Uh, in recent days, he was in the mid to lower 50s. Now he's in the mid 40s. Uh, is his reelection at all in question? I don't think so at all, Michael, because, uh, you know, the, his, his numbers dipped when the numbers of COVID spiked, as everybody knew was going to happen here. Now they're going down dramatically. You know, there's not as much coverage, obviously, when the numbers go down as when they're going up. Uh, so uh, I think he's, an, he's done an amazing job as governor. He's a heck of a leader. Uh, I would put uh, my, my money on him getting reelected. Prognostication from <laughs> Congressman Mario diaz Balart. Always love having you on the program. Great to see you and thanks so much. Thank you very much, Congressman. Great to have you. Thank you both. Hopefully we can do it in person soon. <laughs> I hope so.